Monday, so a quick feedback and a look back for me at my newsletter from last week, Friday, number 42. So a short version here, let's start with Vero. Now, Instagram obviously has been going through some changes. They have been taking some flack in some instances, which, hey, each to his own. It's their product, they can do with it what they want. I just choose not to be involved with it for various reasons. From a photography point of view, Vero is beautiful. It's a great looking app. I personally like if you click on someone's photo, you can zoom in the details there. It's really, really cool. It's also, it's fun again. It feels like it's Instagram from way back where it's fun. It's just, I'm gonna share stuff. I'm not too worried about what people say. I can just share my stuff out there, see some good visuals. So I'm really liking Vero. Will it change eventually? I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. It's gonna become something like Instagram down the line when money follows it, marketers ruin everything, remember. But for now, really enjoying the platform. Great to see a lot of our clients jumping on there, getting people following and such. I'm not gonna engage on there, I'm literally just gonna share my work. So Vero, if you are looking for something as a photographer, go and check it out. Then, two articles in newsletter number 42. Let's start with counter-punching. It's, I spoke to one or two clients today, two clients again today, and we all face storms in our life. We face some hard times, we've had hard decisions. And it's very easy just to go sit in a corner and just feel sorry for yourself and have life beat up on you and you just take the shots, right? Without any comeback. If you're going into a storm or a situation like that, yes, if you feel you want to fight, the gut instinct is to go in and just swing. Just kind of swing and get, get shit done. However, you open yourself up to counter punching. Something's gonna counter punch you, life, right? If you know it's a very hard thing you're going into, I need you to consider that counter punching in that situation might be a good idea for you. Is go into the situation, prepared, mentally, physically, ready, I'm gonna take this, anxiety, ask for a raise, break up a relationship, whatever it might be, right? Go in knowing that you're going to get hit. More than likely, you are gonna get hit. Life's gonna hit you, your emotions and so on. But if you know a punch is coming, you can block yourself, you can block, you can make it go off the shoulder, whatever the case is, but you can prepare yourself for the hit. And after the hit, you know it's done, then, you counter punch, then you react, right? There's a lot to be said for being mentally prepared, going into a hard situation, knowing you're gonna take a hit, but ready to counter punch. It's a good idea, so have a read through that. I know in my life it's been a, it's been a, a pretty cool thing. Even when I go onto stage sometimes and there's q and I can go out and just fire off and hope, but ask people q and I take the hits, sometimes they challenge you, whatever the case is, think about it, okay, cool, then counter punch. You learn something, yes, you might take a bit of a hit, but you know it's coming, so it's not that bad, and then do your thing, and then counter punch. The other one, which is, I think, more common than a lot of us would like to admit, is morning anxiety. That's when you wake up before your alarm, and let's say you set your alarm for five o'clock. You wake up at four o'clock, and you start clock watching, and you dread the moment that alarm is gonna go off, because you know, then you have to get up and deal with stuff. You have to deal with life. And that can be very hard. Now there's, there's something called generalized anxiety disorder, which is you, an anxiety is like free floating, that's just around, you're just nervous and edgy, right? Add to that early mornings, and you, you start worrying and overthinking about things that's going to happen. So you're allowing the future to mess up your current, right? It's very hard. Some symptoms of this, of morning anxiety, which is very similar to generalized anxiety disorder, Waking up feeling tired, feelings of restlessness, you're on edge, tense, irritable, fatigue and body sore, stomach pains and feelings of nausea. You know what that feels like, I know what that feels like. You wake up and there's something that's gonna happen that day and you know it and you just overthink it and over worry it and you get this sick, deep pit in your stomach and you just don't wanna get up. Signs of a panic attack, tight chest, muscles sore, heart rate, difficult breathing, uh, difficulty controlling worry or nervousness. Uh, difficulty concentrating and your mind goes blank. It's that deer in a headlight feeling where you wake up and you sit on the side of the bed and you don't know what to do. It's a real thing, it's a very real thing. Combined now with this is that there's something called the, the cortisol, uh, what was it? Cortisol awakening response. That when you wake up, right, what do we do? We have coffee. Caffeine raises all of those things in the body. Suddenly you're feeling more tense. So maybe pull back on the coffee if this sounds like you, right? Another thing to consider is low blood sh sugar due to a lack of food, because you've been sleeping for anything between four and eight hours, um, can make those things feel worse. Nausea, pit in your stomach, 
and it just enhances everything. It's the way the rational brain and the emotional brain works in the body, all right? So it is a hard thing, it's a very real thing. And here's what I say in the newsletter as well, is you know what to do. Deep down, you know. If you wake up in the mornings and you feel a certain weight tense, speak to someone, journal, start doing exercise, take care of yourself, see a coach, see a therapist, whatever the case might be. You know what to do, but in that situation, in that situation where you wake up and you've got all these feelings, it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. We cripple ourselves because we also get to a point where with all of these anxious feelings, you don't feel you deserve to feel better. We get stuck. There was a study done, I think it was in the late 80s, where, and you can't do these things now, it's a horrible study, but this is, it is what it is. They had a cage, electrical, a cage, like cage, front, back, side, top, bottom, electrical, current through it, dog inside, and they would shock this thing at regular intervals. And initially, when we get shocked, the dog would stress, run around, try and escape, ah, I can't do this. Eventually, after enough shocks, the dog would just lay in the corner and just kind of feel sorry for himself and just yelp. It's horrible, I know, but listen. What they then did is they opened the one side of the cage and they did the shock thing again. The dog didn't leave because he got used to this is my situation that I have to deal with. It's harsh and it is hard and it's all terrible, but I'm going to give you this. Don't be the dog in the cage. Speak to someone. Send me a mail. Phone up a friend, go for coffee with your mom or dad, whatever it is, speak to someone. These feelings of morning anxiety is not unusual. I still get it. I've been doing a lot of work, but I still wake up some mornings and I'm like, I'm anxious, but I don't really know why, but it's, it's hard. It can be very hard. Do something. And I mentioned this to a client at 10 o'clock today. You'll know who, when, when you watch this, one is better than zero. One is better than zero. You don't have to do from an action point of view, 10 out of 10 in order to shift the needle. One is better than nothing. Some kind of action is better than nothing. Let me tell you a quick story to end this off. Last week I had to study for exams. I wrote on Friday, long week of every evening studying, studying, studying. One night I got, it's about half past nine, I've been a long day, and I sat down with my books and I knew this wasn't gonna work. I just felt it. So I got up, I made myself some tea, I sat down. now. I could have called it then. I could have gone to bed. And I could have, and I would have been anxious and like, I didn't study, I didn't study, I didn't study. All I did is I sat there at the table, my, my little workstation, I packed the books correctly. I had module three and four to do, so I put manuals one and two aside. Three and four over here, my highlighters, my little speaker with the music that I listened to, my computer, everything. And I made, the, the, I made my, my space ready for the next day. I didn't study, but I did honor the process. I did do something in order to be able to study. Even that small little thing, one is better than zero, even that made me feel better. I went to bed and I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't study, but at least I did this. Do that. Put yourself in a position where you might be able to say to yourself, even if you don't shoot the lights out, yes, but at least I did this. Do something. One is better than zero. I'm gonna get going. I will see you guys next week's video. Otherwise, news, next newsletter is coming out on Friday. If you haven't yet, you can subscribe in the description down here. And um, I'll chat to you guys soon. Take care of yourself. Remember, you're not alone. And you know what to do. Have a good one, guys. Bye for now.